I took a, um, a contract teaching in Micronesia, specifically Chuuk Island. I was part of the volunteer group that was deployed there. While I was teaching, we decided to hike up some mountains and take some pictures while atop a couple of the uh, peaks. Um, one of the mountains specifically that um, we heard of was Octopus Mountain, it was called Toracha. The locals have told us that that mountain was not some place that we should hike. It was a place that we should stay away from. We asked um, a couple of locals why, and they told us that it was simply a sacred place. We minded our own business. We um, kind of went along and we decided that we, um, we could just be ourselves. And we didn't think of it much until we descended from the mountain. And once we climbed down, I I felt something in my leg, and I decided that it was uh, it was it was something serious. So we stopped in at one of our friends' house, and we came in. We sat down for a few minutes. After that, I had to get up, and I realized that I couldn't get up because of my leg. My leg was it was swollen. The next day, I woke up with a really swollen knee. It was about the size of a softball. I had to be uh, admitted into the hospital. Um, for a month, I had treatment. I couldn't stand up, I couldn't walk around, I had to lay in bed and just wait it out. I had to um, have a operation for the knee to be drained and that causes a lot more pain also. We didn't think much of it, we just thought that it was, it was a hiker's injury. It was anything could have happened. We finished the semester. We uh, decided to take um, a trip out to a neighboring island of Pompeii. We were invited into um, on New Year's into a local's house and we were um, given an opportunity to participate in the tasting of the Sakao. Sakao is a, a hallucinogenic drink that is normally offered to younger generations of boys in order to uh, ritually make it into manhood. It is a psychoactive drink that has an effect of uh, uh, dreaminess. After having Sakao, we were all having fun. We were enjoying ourselves. We were uh, going back to our islands. Shortly after going back home, about a week into teaching again, um, I started losing appetite for food food became really repulsive to me. It became something strange. Starving myself, I stopped, almost stopped drinking. I was uh, suspended from school. I was basically told to stay home and, until I got better. I didn't understand what was going on. I just continued not eating unexplainably. I couldn't, I had to be sent home to seek treatment in the States and I was on the flight back home very shortly after my hospitalization in Chuuk. Now the locals there, while I was in the hospital, they were visiting me and they were telling me that this condition that I had, it was something along the lines of the octopus curse. That's, that's the way they called it. That was the rumor that was going around the island that I had the octopus curse and I couldn't teach anymore. Back in the States, I was hospitalized as soon as on arrival. Over the course of uh, these three months that I was in the hospital, I was getting really thin. I was, um, I was down to about 120 pounds. Uh, this is about 50 pounds less than I normally weigh. I was in bed the whole time while I was in the hospital for three months. I don't remember talking to certain people, but when I remember answering to the doctors and to my siblings, I don't remember reasoning. I don't remember making sense of it. My mom heard about the conference Race to Deliver that was happening here in Pasco. And uh, since I was so weak and I couldn't travel, my mom had given a local pastor from Charlotte, North Carolina, my picture and a shirt to stand in the line of prayer in Pasco. 
on Sunday morning, he was in the prayer line with my picture and wearing my shirt. He was waiting for John Chi to touch my picture and connect with me through the distance of several states. That night, I had a dream, specifically with one of my sisters in Christ came to me in the form of an angel. She told me that it was time to eat. She told me that I needed to eat from that point on. I woke up from that dream very awake, more awake than I could remember being awake in months. It was like a flip of the switch. It was, it was instant. It felt new, it felt different. I didn't understand it, but I knew that it was necessary for me to eat from that point. It made sense. I started feeling improvements and changes in my body immediately after that day. Um, actually, that day, I, I wanted to start walking. I was wheeled up to the, to the table where I was eating, and I decided to walk from the table to the door at which my doctors were very surprised. And after about 20 days, I was dismissed from the hospital. And now I'm walking on my own. I'm eating on my own. I have a healthy appetite. I'm back at my original weight at about 170 pounds. So I've gained back the 50 pounds that I lost. I'm not sure how to even describe it, but it seemed like it was being underwater for a very long time and not being able to breathe and then coming out and breathing for the first time or breathing different air. My advice is to be aware of the spiritual world that we also share with all the things that surround us. We must be conscious that there are angels and demons, there are things that are beyond our comprehension, beyond our everyday sight. We don't see them, yet they interfere with our lives. There is the Almighty God that can save you from the clasp of the demons and the devil. Reach out and understand that other people were there also. There is salvation. My name is Victor Kovila, and this is my testimony.